time to take a look at some more WWE hot takes, except today we're not going back to Reddit. No, today we're going to a place full of more scum and villainy than Reddit will ever have, the YouTube comment section. You just can't pass the vibe check. And let me know down in the comments your wrestling hot takes. It can be current day or in history, and you'll be in the next episode. The Divas era is the greatest era of women's wrestling. Yeah. I mean, I don't agree, but pop off. I honestly don't think it was nearly as bad as people try to make it out to be. And I think honestly, it should be in that conversation about where we transitioned from the bra and panties era into what we have now. Like it should really get a mention because superstars like Michelle McCool, Beth Phoenix, Eve Torres, Kelly, Kelly, Layla, even the freaking Bella twins as well. For as much as I joke about them a lot, they deserve some credit as well, especially Nikki. And so I do think that they deserve credit, but is it the greatest era of all time? Mm, uh, no. AJ Lee is another one that was right on that brink transition. You've got the four horse women in general. You've got people like Julia now. You've got your Oscars, your Kyrie Sains. Like you can't go ahead and ignore that kind of uh, caliber of a superstar and say that the Divas were the greatest of all time. Respect. But you're wrong. Honestly, though, I will say, if he's talking about the total Divas era, that is the greatest era of all time. No, you're absolutely right. Here, I think they should bring back brand exclusive pay per views and the Evolution pay per view back. I mean, I agree with the Evolution point. Evolution 2 needs to happen. And again, I think it will. But brand exclusive pay per views, uh, I don't really care that much anymore. I've had my fix now. I'll admit, when it was like 2015 and I was kind of still, you know, like a few years into watching wrestling full time and everything like that. It's kind of like, oh, whatever's happening now where SmackDown's a glorified nothing, I want the brand split to come back. Then it came back in 2016 and it fucking slapped for a while. And I've, I've had my fix now. Now I'm kind of like, the way we're doing things now is fine. Do you know what I mean? Because we had it already in 2016. We had, uh, I don't know, I can't think of a good example. Like Backlash was a SmackDown exclusive where AJ Styles won the title. And you had, uh, what was a Raw, a pay-per-view roadblock. I think roadblock. There's a rogue shout. So you know what I mean? I mean, I guess they could, but eh. I don't really care. This is probably the best video in the DDJ golden era. Hang on a minute. That's a hot take. Oh, oh, I, uh, I disagree, but I'm glad you guys are enjoying hot takes. That's good. Personally, I mean, I'd look at any Total Divas video I've made. Those are always hilarious to do. And look at any of the worst episodes of Monday Night Raw I've done. You've got the Camp WWE video. I mean, there's a bunch of them that I'd put in there. Tough Enough. I love the Tough Enough videos. So for as much as I do appreciate a lot of you agreeing with this comment, um, I, I'd say the best is yet to come. Personally, I haven't even begun to cook yet. Let me tell you something right now. WWE 12 is greater than SmackDown vs. Raw 2011. Kill yourself. Okay, so this next one's a bit of a mouthful, but I can handle it. I uh, just got word. Everything before the Attitude Era in WWE was honestly overrated. Sure, there are some highlights like Bret Hart, but people like Hulk Hogan and co, I feel definitely couldn't make it in the company today and uh, was only their main attraction along with other strong big guys just because of how they look because the majority of their moves are flashy but really look painless half the time. Now, this is one of those hot takes that I absolutely agree with. I wholeheartedly agree with you. I honestly do not think if I got into professional wrestling, if I was born way earlier and I was a wrestling fan in the 80s, I don't think I would have been a wrestling fan. Do you know what I because mean? Because while I understand that it's a perspective thing, like obviously people watching back in the 80s, that was like the best they had at that point. That was, oh, Hulk Hogan and like all this, you know, flashy kind of corny character stuff. I get it. It was a thing of the time. But at the same time, that's just but not my cup of tea. And I know who I am as a person and what I like and the 80s and like that cartoony stuff. I wouldn't have been into it. I don't think I ever would have been a fan if that would have been my introduction to all of this. Because you look at the Attitude Era and I think I can understand why someone could turn this on on TV and be like, oh, this is, I'm, I'm into this. This is awesome. Or hell, the Ruthless Aggression Era or even the PG Era, I can understand. Because you look at someone like John Cena and you think, oh yeah, I can understand why you'd want to be a fan of this. It's like Superman, but better. I'm, uh, I'm not a huge Superman guy, by the way. No, big, big Superman hater over here. Not a fan. He's mid- He's overrated and he sucks. Quite frankly, Superman, hawk. But no, this is one of those hot takes that I wholeheartedly agree with. Everything before like 1997, maybe 1998. 
I don't care. Who cares? Obafemi should be getting that 2002 Lesnar push. Interesting. Alpha Academy should go to NXT for a while, and getting rid of the NXT women's tag titles was one of the worst decisions WWE has ever made. Ooh. Alpha Academy going to NXT for a while, I wouldn't mind because, I mean, it, I, I can see the vision there. I can see them working down there. You've got kind of similar ish factions like Chase U. Hell, I wouldn't even mind the Creed Brothers and Chad Gable going down to NXT every now and again because I can see them cooking as well. But getting rid of the NXT women's tag titles, now that's an interesting one. Personally, I don't think that was a bad decision. Like, I know they have a lot of women, but at the same time, there is such a thing as too many titles, and plus I prefer the North American women's title being a thing rather than more tag titles, personally. I'm just a bigger fan of singles wrestling than tags, uh, tag wrestling, personally. And in terms of the Obafemi one, uh, getting that 2002 Lesnar push, I see your vision. I think when he goes to main roster, he absolutely should be a beast, but 2002 Lesnar, eh, too far too far. You don't want him beating Cody at next year's SummerSlam, okay? That oh, yeah. Bron Steiner is a dumb name up the dog Bron Breaker. Okay. I mean, I don't agree with that one personally. I think Bron Steiner is a way better name and it's got the lineage behind but, it. But I mean, Bron Breaker, it'll always be a part of his career, you know? He can still do the dog thing. He can still be like, where the dog's at or whatever ooh, 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 and hear the crowd. I mean, he can still do that. So yeah, I don't really agree with that one personally. Deontay is my queen of the ring. I'm a little lost, but fair enough. Th th Thank you. Congratulations on 110 subscribers. <laughs> Thank you. I agree uh, about the losses uh, doesn't equal burial comment. Mi Chin slash Mia Yim had a lot of losses recently until her feud with Chelsea and Piper, banger of a match, that dumpster match. But it never came at her expense. She was putting champs and up and comers over. Yeah, I think she's doing fantastic right now and by no means do I think she's buried. No. I personally maintain that Solo isn't supposed to look like a threat for his current run. I don't think WWE actually wants us to treat him like a threat. He was just made into a ripoff tribal chief so that we would want Roman back. Uh, so anyway, the too long didn't read right there is that Solo is still doing good in his current personally, role. Personally, I still think that brother should be flipping burgers right now, but it is what it is, I guess. Put the fries in the bag, bro. I don't know. I don't know. I like Solo. I just don't think he's doing that good right now, really. Sorry. And that right there is my hot take for the Dude, video. Some people think their fave wrestler got buried just because he lost some match, and that is really dumb. Like some people saying Drew got buried after that fucking good Hell in a Cell match with Punk. What the fuck, bro? Uh, who, who is saying that? I haven't scored the timeline in a while, but anyone saying that? You're stupid. No, Drew's not buried. You guys, again, I said it last time, you're throwing that term around too much, too loosely for my goddamn life. Okay, Mustafa yeah, Ali was one of the most underrated and underused WWE superstars of all time. He could have been a WWE champion. He could have, but... <laughs> Yeah. You see, the thing with Mustafa Ali is that I feel like if any year was going to be his year, it would have been 2019. But obviously, Kofi Mania kind of overwrote, you know, that whole situation right there. Then there was the Money in the Bank thing. So, sorry, Mustafa. I don't know what to say. Unlucky, I guess. And I also will go ahead and say, even though he was never WWE champion, he still had a pretty great WWE career. Granted, they did keep dropping the ball with him and whatever he was doing towards the end, as we saw in the worst Raw episode where he was trying to be like a, a clout influencer or something. I don't know. Whatever that was, was bad. But hey, you know, we still love you, Mustafa. You're still class to me. Brock Lesnar is the most overrated and unnecessarily pushed wrestler in all of WWE history. I disagree. The thing with Brock Lesnar is all like controversy aside and you know, like Vince Doc and all that stuff. He's a fantastic, if not one of the greatest athletes of all time. His character is beast and he's very good at what he was doing. So I don't think overrated is the right vibe for him. Now, unnecessarily pushed, maybe. Maybe in those later years, he didn't need to come back and screw over a Mustafa Ali or a Kofi Kingston or a Big E or a Seth Rollins. He Maybe, maybe not, but... So, yeah. <laughs> Miz is better than Kenny Omega, Okada, Young Bucks, Midcard, Hangman, LOL, hee hee. What in the blue hell? Yeah, you're right. You know, I almost disagreed with you right there, Brody Reeves 2029, but then you said LOL, hee hee. And I thought, LOL, hee hee, you're right. I think creating a storyline out of the real Vince situation would be insane and a work of art. Oh my God. You're nuts, you're nuts. What you mean? With all that sexual harassment and shit and the fucking lawsuit and Janelle Grant. 
<laughs> do you want to you wanna make it into a story? Is that Vincent's burner? That's Vincent's burner right there. Oh, we should make it into a storyline. <laughs> That'll be funny, pal. <laughs> Shut up. Honestly, if Vince was still in charge, that kind of thing would happen. He would be like, oh, the Mr. McMahon character. He was special. He was special. No. He's done. My hot take, if we get a women's mid-card title, no one will care for it after about three PLEs. Um, I disagree with that one as well, sorry. I think with the amount of talent that the women have, and NXT has proved it with their mid-card North American title, I think a women's IC title, and I've been saying it for years, I think it would slap. And quite frankly, I think we're well overdue. So on one of these Monday Night Raws, I need you to make your goddamn entrance, okay? Ooh, you, you know, you do the thing. <laughs> damn microphone here in the world wrestling federation we have too many goddamn talented women and now we're gonna have a mid card sorry an intercontinental title mid card is not a word we say on tv actually i think we <laughs> i think we do actually so maybe i messed up my line i messed up my line big fucking deal before the video started i was gonna comment about how chelsea green should win a world title but it seems that's not much of a hot take hey we're leading that chelsea train fellas these wrestling hot takes is the laziest fad you wrestling channels are beating it into the ground first of all that was my first one so i mean just leave me alone so. and second of all um no literally all of them are entertaining so shut the fuck up babysitter sky nonce name by the way and quite frankly because i only just started doing it i got a lot left in the tank word to mark henry Hot take john moxley was and still is my favorite shield member i mean fair enough personally it's always going to be seth for me i think seth has had a damn near perfect career but i i love them all genuinely they are all like first ballot double hall of famers it's not even a doubt you tribal know? chief started under vince y'all have bad memories bloodline is vince's last great storyline i mean you've also got to remember young zeus 87 he was pretty stubborn for i don't know like six years on doing that the only reason he did it is because of the pandemic really so if anything that's the pandemic's idea i'm not giving that old decrepit skeleton any credit okay triple h took that 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 baby that the pandemic started and he said i'm gonna finish the fucking story for you they should bring back the european championship for the women and let chelsea green win it and dress up as different euro countries all the time i mean if it's for the chelsea green agenda we I co-sign. Are going nowhere. Quite frankly, I don't think that's enough. I think we need Chelsea Green on the cover of 2K. We need Chelsea Green cups. We need Chelsea Green mugs. Chelsea Green's autobiography. We need a Chelsea Green plane. I want to fly air green. Wait, Roman wait, Reigns only works well in factions. You're wrong. Tyler Bates should be WWE champion one day. Absolutely. freaking lootly yes. Although, to be honest, I think it should be Pete Dunn first. We need, we need that Pete Dunn. We're on the right track with Pete Dunn. I'll give you credit, Hunter. You brought back his name. You're slow. His theme song's pretty good. Rare, extremely rare. Death Rebel W, by the way. Like it's generic, but it kind of slaps in a way. You know. Yeah, low key. It took my breath away. Death Rebel. But, He's cooking here, but yeah, Tyler Bay, uh, Pete Dunn, all should be WWE champion at some point. Absolutely. LA Knight is better than Cody Rhodes, and he is more entertaining than Cody Rhodes. LA Knight should be higher up on the card. Uh, I, I mean, he should be higher, but better than Cody? Nah. Yeah! At random, I have chosen for Lexus King to win the Rumble. So yeah, I think I do want that. It took my breath away. Huh. You know, I'd rather see Hornswoggle or... Gee, a piece of dust win it. <laughs> but fair enough. Triple H is proving to be a terrible booker when it comes to the entertainment aspect of WWE. Sure, the match quality has improved, but the product is definitely less fun. What? Are you even watching this? What? <laughs> the failure to give Jey Uso or LA Knight the money in the bank has set the World Heavyweight title back a few years. There's really no need for Gunther to have another long title reign. I dis agree because i love my ring general but at the same time i do agree with that la knight should have won at 2023 and jay uso should have won this year at the same time i agree here is a hot take the attitude era boomers would kill me over i think the spinner belt is cooler than the winged eagle belt oh my god are you trying to get assassinated holy shit checking my surroundings here before i say what i'm about to say um between me and you chat i low-key uh, agree with that 
Deontay DDJ should do more hot take videos. And nah, you know, I just can't ever see it getting over, personally. If black wrestlers could say the N-word in promos, Harlem Heat's promo on Hulk Hogan would have went down as a goat. Uh, uh yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think that Randy Orton deserves one more title run before he retires. I agree. I don't know where you're going to fit it in like, but I agree. Mauro Ranello is the greatest commentator of all time. I'm going to stop you right there and say, fuck yeah. Yes. I am so tired of Mauro Ranello slander on the timeline as if most of you guys tweeting the slander now weren't eating that shit up in Prime NXT. I'm tired like, of it. Like, you can go ahead and make fun of, oh, he, he tries to fit in a reference here, but that's just, it was working, man. It, go back and watch those Prime NXT takeovers. It was working and it was brilliant and, oh, I miss him. He made those matches and moments feel huge. Okay. You want to talk about people like Johnny Gargano being the heart and soul and everything? Mauro Ranello was the heart and soul of the commentary table. Occasionally cashing in money in the bank on a mid-card title is fine. They need more prestige. I mean... And that is so cringe, brother. I just, it's one of those things, right, where if I'm a wrestler and I go to cash in on a mid... Why would I go to cash in on the mid-card title when the big gold gets me a bigger payday? The big title gets me... Do you know what I mean? It just doesn't make any sense to do so. I hear you, but it doesn't make any sense. Hot take Alberto Del Rio had the greatest entrance of all time. Terrible guy, but his entrance around 2011 was undeniable. Oh my god, what? You're nuts. You're nuts. You're crazy. You're insane. But in the same breath, I did enjoy his entrance, especially his theme, actually. His original theme was Fire Realiza or whatever it was called. Hot take, Ilya Dragunov is a top five performer currently in WWE. You're absolutely right. Can't wait for him to come back. Shelton Benjamin is the most underrated wrestler ever. Should have made him world champion. You damn fucking right. Your point about fans getting too caught up in behind the scenes stuff and removing the fun is 100% true. Saw a dude raging about punk winning at Bad Blood the other day, kept saying Punk politicked his way to a win. No matter how many people pointed out that WWE just weren't going to let him return after 10 years and lose his first feud, and that no outlet, no website, no dirt sheet, and no insider has claimed that's what happened, he just wouldn't acknowledge any of those points. So caught up in the backstage myth of Punk being a problem, he was convinced that's why he won despite zero evidence of it at all. Weird people sometimes, online wrestling fans. I agree with all of Although, it. Although admittedly, I am a little uh, biased. I'm wearing the Chicago Jordanton. Uh, and I've got the, the tattoo. Uh, but, and, and I met. <laughs> okay, well, okay, just leave me alone, you know, like. I'm in the thick of it. Joe Hendry is the 2024 version of 2012 Zack Ryder. I like both, but the same vibe. Mmm, no, I would disagree with that. Mm. Vince McMahon is going to win his case against that prost- No pop. Well, I'm done. Why'd I read that? I'm done. It's over me. It's been real. This has been hot takes. I'm done.